Every ADC knows the pain of being flamed by their teammates who seem to think that as an ADC, you need to somehow be at every random skirmish, team fight, or whatever, all while playing the most gold-reliant role in the game. As an ADC, you know better, of course, especially if you use skill capped, and know that getting solo farm and towers are usually going to earn you way more gold so you can hard carry your bad teammates later. But it's hard to always get the balance right for where to be on the map at the right times. Should you farm? Should you group? Where your mouthy teammates are concerned, it's always group. This can cause you to second guess yourself, and when we sent a challenger to gold elo, he was constantly flamed by his support for every decision he made throughout the game, despite carrying his teammates with those decisions. In this guide, we'll teach you how to deal with toxic teammates who are begging you to make bad decisions and instead, always make the best choices that have by far the highest chance of guaranteeing you'll carry your teammates to an easy win, even if they're losing their minds throughout the game. And remember, we at Skillcap specialize in teaching you the best possible strategies to climb with, even if your mechanics suck and you have teammates from hell, just like you're about to see in this guide. But there's so much more you can access right now on our website. Be sure to check us out after this so you can enroll in our Challenger-made courses, which teach you everything you need from climbing with terrible support to farming 10 CS per minute. Everything you need is waiting for you at Skillcap if you're serious about improving, backed by our skill insurance so there's no risk. And with that said, let's go ahead and get into today's guide. Here's what's going down. We've got Hector once again playing Gold Platinum Elo, and he got paired with one of those spam pingers you guys are all too familiar with. Not only are they insanely annoying to play with, but you already know their calls are gonna suck too. We recommend muting these players instantly, but Hector is a content creator at heart, and knows that this Heimerdinger will make for a great lesson today, so he's going to endure the pain. As for how the lane went early on, a super random fight breaks out in bottom, which ends up with Hector getting a kill, but also dying in the end. That's all you need to know. After respawning and walking back to lane, Heimerdinger pings to play aggressively here, and this is a mistake that many ADC players will fall for. Look at the chat. This guy has been spam pinging and was flaming the Jace for the earlier deaths. You should never listen to players who are on tilt like this. Hector may have a small lead with the kill he got earlier, but let's break down why these pings are massive bait. It's the basics of the basics that with a ranged support, you always want to fight with a wave advantage versus engaged supports. In this case, Sivir is at a massive wave disadvantage versus a Draven and Nautilus, which is asking to immediately die if they walk up to trade. They also have no vision set up. If Vi is in the area as they fight, it's going to be bad. Hector will miss this huge wave if he gets chunked out or dies, which is exactly why he's positioned super far back. But unfortunately, the Heimer doesn't understand the threat and goes down. This is what is the most frustrating part about playing ADC, as you all know. You can do things right, but your support messing up just leads you to being alone versus a three-man dive with nothing you could do about it. Well, in most cases. Hector here could have very easily flashed that hook, but his fingers are so slow on the uptake this winter, you'd think he has frostbite. Anyway, this is a topic we really want to bring up, which is how quick players are to listen to their teammates' calls, like this one from Heimer. Remember, you're the one watching our guides trying to improve to get out of silver, gold, or platinum, and that's because you hate playing with terrible teammates and want to reach an elo where people are competent, right? Then why are you listening to your teammates' calls? If you know that everyone in your elo is not good, then why do you think they're making good calls or communicating well? You should just trust yourself and know that you're smart enough to make decisions on your own. Like this following example, let's quickly run through what happened once more to get to our learning point. After respawning, Hector began playing towards his win condition, which is to spam shove with his ranged support. This went very well, and eventually the Nautilus tilted out of his mind, handing over a free kill. Things keep going well, too. A little later, Hector's team sets up a gank on the enemy bot, scoring two kills. Cool. Now, let's talk about our next big moment. You've all been here before. Don't you hate being ahead knowing you've got a nice recall lined up for a big spike and your teammates ping you to cancel for whatever reason? Oh, we need to do dragon, or we need to invade, or yada yada yada. You then cancel your base to work together with them and your lead is thrown for no reason. Great. That's what is about to happen here. We just saw the enemy bot duo die, right? Well, Draven is back in lane, which means that even though he's not visible, Nautilus is likely here soon as well. Here's what Hector's gold elo teammates are planning. They just see Vi on the blast cone and think this is a super easy bait to win 3v2. Sure, that might happen, but they're missing a lot of pieces to this puzzle. Sivir and Heimer's ultimates are down, Hector is half health and mana, he's also sitting on a pile of gold. Not only that, but Nautilus is likely here soon, which they definitely aren't accounting for. Hector knows all this and takes the main advice of this guide, don't listen to terrible calls and just leave. 
Yep, it ends up with Heimer dying for free because he thought Hector would stay. This leads to Heimer flaming the hell out of him, thinking this wasn't his own fault. To that we say, who cares? Let your teammates die and try to never get baited by them. If you play solid and stick to the fundamentals, it won't matter. Hector knew that he was about to power spike with his recall, which is a way more consistent way of winning the game rather than a risky bait. When back in lane, he just runs down Draven and Nautilus all on his own by playing around his item advantage. This should be your goal when playing in your own games. You should not be afraid of being pinged, flamed, trolled, etc. Your teammates have zero clue about what they're doing. It's on you to make the choices that you think are correct. That's how you actually improve and climb. Avoiding getting your good recalls cancelled is one thing, but another key skill you need to learn is to avoid fights you simply can't predict. Surely there have been times where you see that there is no objective up, no tower to defend, absolutely no reason to fight, so you go and farm a jungle camp. Meanwhile, the most random engage occurs, and your teammates proceed to flame you for not being there. Let's take a look at a perfect example of this happening and how a challenger deals with it. So after taking the bot tower, Hector sees his Fiora die in top. So he makes his way up to this empty lane so he can defend the tower and potentially take the enemy outer one. While he gets up there, Jace arrives as well and he knocks out the Aatrox. Nicely done, mate. Hector falls into the river a bit, going to the potential fight brewing, and let's pause here. So based on what you've previously seen, Hector clearly abandoned this play. But why? Why would he not commit here? Well, there's no way to catch the Vi that was running away. His team has no good engage or chase potential. Not only this, but they're walking into enemy vision, which likely has a Cassiopeia or a Nautilus lurking in one of these bushes. So there's two outcomes. Either Vi can just easily get away because Hector's team can't chase, or if they chase, Hector's team is potentially walking into a trap. And so with this info, here's the correct macro play here. Jace takes the safe way back to mid, with Rengar shadowing him while doing wolves. Meanwhile, Heimer sets up in this tri brush to cut this path off, while Hector begins pushing the top wave to take a free tower. Easy, right? Okay, yeah, that's never happening in solo queue, right? You can just throw that idea out the window. Which brings us to a super important concept to carrying as ADC, especially in low elo. Don't let your teammates' dumb calls waste your time. There's no fight happening here that is worth going to. Hector's immediate instinct is to ditch his team and to push top. He knows that even if they do get engaged on, their deaths will buy him time to get a ton of turret plates and waves in top. And that's precisely what happened. The fight went on for so long that Hector basically took the entire tower and all this gold for himself. In a little over a minute, it, he went from a little over 500 gold to around 2,000 gold after taking Krugs. That's the equivalent of nearly 5 kills by just ignoring the stupidity going on around him and not wasting his own time. You can't predict what is going to happen in solo queue, so if you think something is not worth going to, then just don't go. It doesn't matter if you get flamed. And on the topic of wasting time, how often has this happened to you? Your teammates called a group, you all just randomly begin sieging a tower, and you get wiped. Great. Towers are amongst the biggest throwing baits in the game, right alongside Baron, and it's especially true for ADC players. You're often told that taking towers is your job, since you're so good at it. This is very misleading, and it makes low elo ADC players play so much worse. Just because you're good at something doesn't mean you have to do it. That's like saying Malphite is good at engaging, so he should just run into five people with his ultimate, disregarding everything else. Sounds dumb when we put it like that, right? But that's basically what ADC players bait themselves into doing. Yes, you kill towers fast, but you should only hit them when it's actually worth doing so. For example, after that previous top lane play, Hector is very fit. He runs down mid, takes the tower, and even kills Cassiopeia on top of that. After doing so, Heimer now begins to ping. He wants Hector to stay and to siege the tier 2 tower. There's a billion reasons why this is horrible, and you could easily spot these things in your own games too. For starters, the tower is full HP and hard to fully take down. Two, the wave is still far away, so they can't even hit the tower yet. Three, they have no ultimates, and they're lacking in health and mana. Four, death timers are still pretty short this early into the game. The enemy team will likely be able to spawn and defend before they can take the tower. And five, there's other things Hector can do, like secure dragon and fixing the bot lane wave. Just like before, the Heimer is predictably punished for his greed. So far, has Hector displayed any sort of crazy high-level challenger mechanics or macro? No, he's not winning this game because he's insanely good. He's getting really far ahead just because he's not getting baited by his teammates' dumb calls. There's literally zero hesitation on his part to just ditch anyone and everyone if they make a decision he doesn't agree with. Another key issue we don't talk enough about at Skillcapped is understanding your own reasoning behind the decisions that you're making. We often talk about what the correct or best decision is in a given situation, but something far more important is why you're making a particular decision. 
While watching, you may not have fully agreed with every one of Hector's decisions. That's actually fine. It goes without saying that it's impossible to play a perfect game in League. There's way too many variables, so you can't always expect to make the 100% correct choice. And people can even disagree on what the correct choice is in certain circumstances. It's not that you need to make perfect choices to win your games. However, you need to be making your choices for the right reasons. To discuss that, let's move a little further into the game. As Hector finishes pushing this wave in mid, he's now got three different choices he could make that are all pretty decent depending on what you want to achieve. One, he could keep pushing mid. This makes it hard for the enemy team to collapse towards Fiora and Rengar, allowing them to keep putting pressure in top. Or he could just do the straightforward thing and roam up to group with them after crashing. This way he'd be ready to help if a fight broke out in top. His third choice is that he can just ditch all of that and go to farm waves and pressure the bot lane tower. Obviously, that's precisely what he's going to do, but we'll come back to those previous decisions in a moment. First, let's see what the actual outcome of his decision was. Hector gets down to bottom and pushes the lane in hard. Due to being so strong, he's also able to pressure the Aatrox into a 1v1, which he easily wins. Now he can take the tower on top of that, and he's got himself yet another ton of gold. Clearly, Heimer isn't happy about this, and he might actually have a right to be this time. Looking back at this moment, it's easy to argue against going bottom as the wrong choice. However, the reasoning is more important, as we mentioned earlier. Hector went bottom because in his mind, getting gold for himself is the only thing that matters. If his teammates die for that goal, so be it. But like we said, going top here is probably better in this game state. However, it's very important to understand that choosing to go top doesn't make you correct, though. If you only want to go top because Heimer was paying to do so, and your default action every game is to follow your teammates' calls, then that's a bad decision. But if you go top because you're already ahead, and taking low-risk plays is how you think you'll consistently win, then that's a good call. What we want to get at is that fumbling into the right decision sometimes won't help you climb. It's about how you get to your decisions that matters more. This is the actual way of consistently making better decisions in your game. Always think about why you're doing something. We notice that low-elo players are very quick to just follow along to their team's calls, or they group because they're just insecure. That's not good, and you won't climb that way. Basically, you can win the game in a variety of ways. For example, later on into the game, Hector is continuing to split push while Baron is up. He's doing this because he's confident that he'll have so much side lane pressure that his team is bound to get something when he's inevitably collapsed on. On the flip side, if you think that pressuring like this wasn't worth the risk, then that's good too. But that should actually go through your head before you group up with the team. You need to actually think about your decisions before you make them, rather than just fumbling into an okay call. Anyway, those are the major things we wanted to focus on in this guide. Let's wrap things up by seeing how Hector turns his lead into an easy carry to win the game. Hector is coming out of base when his Jace gets jumped on by the enemy Vi and goes down. Being nearly full build, Hector manages to pop her GA before kiting away. Tragically, his Rengar gets baited by this and leaps into his own death. Things aren't looking great, but Hector is very strong and he knows the enemy team is going for Dragon. In late game situations like this, you can often cheese wins by looking for a flank, even as an ADC. So you can see Hector trying to walk through mid out of line of sight to set up in this brush. When flanking as an ADC, you're obviously very vulnerable, so pay attention to your opponent's movement. They'll usually give away whether they have vision of you or not. See how no one is even looking Hector's way right now? That's a guarantee that they don't know he's here. Now he can just wait patiently for the perfect moment to strike. He comes out and completely annihilates everyone on the enemy team on his own. And that's why farming is so OP. Having basically full build at 26 minutes will definitely let you do that. We talked about a lot in this guide, but your main takeaway should be to trust yourself and to ignore what everyone wants you to do in your games. Do what you want to do, and avoid following calls just because you think you need to please your teammates. Trust us, that will never let you carry games properly. Alright guys, remember to check out Skillcapped if you want to start climbing stupidly fast as ADC. We have the world's best courses waiting for you right now that teach you everything you need to know that will make your climb so much easier and more enjoyable. And if you don't climb at least 5 divisions when actively using Skillcapped, you can claim a refund so there's literally no risk if you're serious about improving. Thanks for watching.